Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torian, and welcome back to Hearts Farm 4 as we are playing as Turkey. So, I gotta say that uh, the Turkey situation, you know, all the, the mechanics, the focus tree, uh, you know, everything that was added in the, the Battle for the Bosphorus DLC, this is probably one of the more complicated countries I've played uh, in Hoi 4, uh, which is very interesting considering the fact that they're, you know, a minor country that didn't even participate in the war so yeah they got some really cool mechanics but it is also really confusing uh because you know you're trying to balance the the two different uh elements you know what you're getting from the event options and the decisions and such like what you're actually getting from them and then trying to figure out you know what you're supposed to select in order to, to go the route that you want to go in this case you know we want to go with the ottomans here uh you don't know what the the overall long-term effects are going to be of these uh event options that you're picking and I never really liked when Paradox did that in the Hoi 4, uh, you know, focus trees with their events and stuff. Uh, I feel like, I feel like you know, you play the game and you want to go a certain route. And, and I understand what Paradox is trying to do, but at the same time, I also kind of wish it was a little bit more clear, like, what you needed to do. Because uh, I actually had to look it up before we started today's episode. And apparently you're supposed to, if you want to go with the Ottomans, you have to support the opposition party on everything. Uh, and you, you can, you know, maybe have one or two events where you don't, which is good because we didn't support them in one of the events. But for the most part, you need to support them, uh, you know, in every event. And then you, when it comes to the election, it's not entirely clear who you're supposed to select, but you have to select that, that opposition party or else you can't become the Ottomans. But yeah, I never really liked when Hearts of Iron 4 did that. And they do it with a few other things. I know the Dutch have uh, one direction that's kind of hard to go uh, because of, it's actually, I think, the Monarch route. Certain elements can be difficult to do because you have to do, uh, I, I know they changed it a little bit, but you had to do very specific things to have, you know, the, the direction you wanted to go actually work. And it's just kind of strange because, you know, most of Hoi 4 doesn't do that. You know, if you want to bring back the Kaiser here in Germany, as we have them doing in this series, you know, you just go with the focus. You win the Civil War and it's, it's over. Like, there's not really much else to it. And that's the way it is with most countries. There's really not a whole lot of requirements. It's pretty easy to do anything. Uh, but yeah, some countries, like in, in Turkey's instance here, where, where you just have to do very specific things. And if you don't do them just right, then it just doesn't work. And, and I don't know, it just feels like you're shooting in the dark and it's kind of a guessing game. You're just kind of guessing what the game wants you to do. And you either have to have already done it before or you have to look up a guide to be sure. And uh, I, I never really liked when, when Hoi 4 did that. In other games, it's fine. It's just this game. It just feels like it doesn't fit. But other than that one element, I really like it. I like the complexity to it. I like everything they have. It's, it's awesome. Uh, it is kind of a shame that you see this with the minor countries and you play like France or Britain or Germany and they really don't have those type of mechanics for the most part. They're pretty simple uh, when playing as them. And I think that's weird uh, to have like countries like Turkey, Mexico, Spain, uh, countries who didn't even weren't even involved in World War II that they had the most complex and probably best systems in, in some cases. You know, you'd think the major countries involved in World War II would, you know, have have a more complex system and have more mechanics to them, but they don't. So that's strange. But yeah, I am liking it overall. Uh, I would say that I think uh, part of the reason why I find some difficulty with it is because I don't have any context because my knowledge of Turkish history stops in the 1920s. Like, I don't really have much knowledge what happens after the 1920s. So I don't really have any context with some of these, some of the characters involved here and, and some of the events. Yeah, let's go and get started in today's episode. There are a couple things I want to do here before we start letting it roll. Uh, let's go ahead and get our fleet and put them back in port because they're not even getting any experience anyway. They're not really doing much here because of the fact that we don't have any fuel. And I really like to get these tanks finished oh, training, and that's there. just never going to happen because of the the fuel. Uh, but we do have enough, like you know, the default fuel that every country has. We have enough of that to get these guys trained up, and then we can pull them out because you know they are taking attrition from the training. And uh, you know we don't want to have to to replace those tanks. So I'd love to pull them out as soon as they finish up their training. And so we'll pull the fleet in, maybe put them back out a little bit later. The other thing we could do is spend some of our army experience. Uh, so I think what we'll do here is just move these over to here. Get rid of that one. And this will be our 20 width. I don't know if we would have create uh, 40 combat width. You know, we have a lack of manpower and equipment. And so I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to create them in this series. We'll just have to see uh, whether or not we'll be able to, uh, to do it. Uh, that's all we can do for right now. That gets them up to the 20 combat width. Other than adding the support, these are essentially done. Uh, feel free to post any name suggestions for our, our divisions. Uh, I'm sure that there's probably already some, some name suggestions on the comments. Uh, but 
feel free to post other ones. We'll need uh, a name for each of our divisions. Uh, I'm sure uh, Janissaries will be one of the uh, one of the names suggested. So just post your suggestions down in the comments below, and I'll pick the best ones, and we'll get those units named. So I think that's everything that we needed to do here. So let's go and let it play. Try and make some progress here. Uh, we did get those tanks knocked out. I uh, don't think we'll get the, the support artillery. Uh, again, military factories are an issue. Uh, so we'll get something else. Let's just go through here and figure out what we still need. Uh, I know we need this one here, so I think that's what we're going to get. Yeah, let's get that next. Look at the improved machine tools. Uh, we're about to get our fourth research slot, I believe. We do need to update the tanks here. Eight hours ago, Menderes triumphantly announced the debut of Turkey's newest and most dangerous opposition party, the Democrat Party. He announced that the Democrat Party intended to topple CHP's monopoly on power and that the country would be steered in a brand new direction the likes of which has never been seen before. The three pillars of the party were unveiled to jubilant crowds with Menderes pledging his government would be committed to faith, fatherland, and freedom in that order. More surprising was Mandera's announcement that a DP-led Turkey would be decidedly more interventionist than any other Turkish government since the nation's founding. The announcement was met with fury inside of Kemalist circles, and Mustafa Kemal Ataturk has pledged to his supporters in Istanbul today that even if the election will be harder fought than initially believed, the CHP shall emerge from the upcoming election, still the governing leaders of the nation. All right, so let the best party win. This is going to increase stability by plus 5% change the name of that Democratic Party to the Democrat Party, and it's going to remove that rising Islam modifier that is hitting us kind of hard. I guess I can't show it, obviously, because this has been removed, but yeah, it was, it was hitting us on the, on the political power. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. Stability is a little bit higher as well. Not quite high enough to play around over here, trying to reduce the, uh, the resistance and get that compliance up. We have gotten the compliance up a good deal in this area. I want to say, I don't recall, but I want to say that I saw somewhere that it's like 60 or 70% or something like that. I think it's 70% is what you have to get it at in order to take those one decisions, uh, which we don't have access to yet. Uh, that comes down here, permit regional elections, and this will unlock the occupation law reconciliation and unlocks the integrate Kurdish state decisions. All right, so it looks like uh, the Civil War has split again. So now we have the Anarchist Uprising. And it'll likely spit one more time. Yeah, we have one more time for that to split. And uh, that's the Carlist, and hopefully they do well. That's who we set to, to win. But I don't know, though. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to pop up just yet. We'll have to see. Uh, Utilize Foreign Capital has been knocked out. That's going to get us the one research slot. Super important. Also allows us to discuss investment possibilities with the great powers of Europe and the United States. Okay. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I think we wanted to do... I guess we can go ahead and do the election now. Yeah, I suppose we can knock the election out. There's a few other things we could do as well. Uh, there is benefits to waiting to do the election, from my understanding. Again, I'm kind of just basing this on things I've read uh, from other people and from the, the developer diaries. Because, first of all, Mustafa Kamel has fantastic bonuses. I don't think anybody else is going to have better ones than that. And so, you know what? I think we're going to hold off on doing the election a little bit. Because there, there certainly are some, some benefits to waiting. And, and there's several things that we can do first. So, for instance, we could get this one to get the... I mean, we don't really need the war support, but... And yeah, we could do this one here, and that would result in, I'm guessing, a uh, non-aggression pact with Afghanistan, Ar Iran, and Iraq, if they agree to it. No immediate benefits. Uh, but yeah, we could go ahead and do that one, since we do have to move along that. Just kind of kill some time. Uh, another option would be go ahead and, and get some of these military focuses. And we have two directions to go here. And I think when it comes to role play wise since we're going with the Ottomans, it makes the most sense to say embrace military tradition. And that's going to give you research bonus for support to tech technology and reconnaissance companies. And then you'll be able to move down to this one. That's going to give research bonuses for mountain infantry and engineers. Or we can go with mechanizing our army, and that's going to give research bonuses for motorized support technology and light tanks. And we get the two military factories. So while roleplay wise, I really feel like this would be the more proper route. And as far as research goes, I can't actually say which one is better because here you're getting five research bonuses, while on this one you're only getting four. 
but you see that these research bonuses are more significant. You're getting one that's 200%, two of them that's 300%, and then one 100%. Here you're getting one 200%, one 150, and then three 100% research bonuses. So I don't really know if you did the math, which one of the, how that would play out as far as like how many days you're saving, which one is better. And as far as technology, the actual technologies go, uh, we want all of those, so it doesn't really matter. So really, it's the military factories. That's the main difference here, and that's that's would be really really helpful. We could we could use them. So I think we're gonna go with this guys to get the military factories. Even even though I feel like this would be more fitting. But let's start over here. Even though they don't give us you know benefits from this, I just want to knock it out real quick because it's only 35 days. So we'll do that one, then we'll do those military ones, and then we'll do the election, guys. Just kind of give it a little bit of time. We'll keep our, our current current leader, since he is pretty darn good. Uh, we do have this extra research slot now. Uh, so let's see what we want to get. We could start working on the, the synthetic oil ones. I don't want to do that just yet, because there's an industrial concern that we might end up getting that would, because uh, we have a couple choices here. We'll look at that once we have some political power. But if we did get that one, uh, then we'd want to wait to start moving down these trees. So instead, let's work on something else. Uh, and let me just see what all the options are. Uh, you know, the, the fighters, we don't have the the, des the design company for that just yet. So I want to wait until we have it, or at least going to know that we have it before. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to go for right there is land doctrines. But before we finish up the research. Yeah, I think that's the one we should go for, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and start working on these these land doctrines. I was gonna wait till we get the theorist, but we're close enough to getting one. I think we'll get a theorist soon. So we have to select which route we want to go. I think mobile warfare is clearly not the right choice for us, just based on the way our army will be designed. I don't really like mass assault that much, so that leaves superior firepower or grand battle plan, and, and both of them are good. Uh, I I typically like superior firepower a bit more, and we also also go for this more often. And so maybe we'll go for a grand battle plan because remember our theorist is a grand battle plan there. So if we can get an extra 5% research if we go down this route. So I think it makes more sense to go down grand battle plan. And this is this is a fine route. Again, I prefer this one. But I think it fit more for the way our army will be designed and how we'll be fighting. So yeah, we'll go with this one. Go ahead and start getting this research. It's going to be 87 days. And uh, still not high enough on the stability to really mess with these just yet. And Edward VIII empowers the King's Party. So remember that does result in Britain losing all of their colonies. Or maybe not all of them, they still have British Malaya. So British Malaysia is still theirs. But everybody else is now independent and they, I think they're in their own faction now as well. Uh, we can get industrial concern, we'll go check out that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I do believe these are all in a faction, yeah. So you can see that the former dominions are, are now all allied. So let's go and take a look at the industrial concern. So we have three choices, because this one here, I I don't know how that one unlocks, but yeah, we won't be able to uh, get that one right now, and I don't really want to get that one either. It's got some good bonuses, but it also has several penalties. You know, the political power penalty and the resources to market penalty. Uh, so while you get the huge industrial research speed bonus uh, and a couple other good bonuses as well, yeah, we're not going to go that route, guys. Uh, so we're going to go with one of the other three, and this one's not an option either. Uh, Turkish State Railways is not in the branch of the focus tree that we're going. And so that leaves two of them, uh, two choices here. Uh, with this one here, you're going to get a daily political power gain. Uh, it's small. It's not a huge uh, bonus, but it helps. You get improved relations opinion. Don't really care about that. And then you get the electronics research speed plus 10%. Uh, over here... We're going to get a total of 15% research bonuses, 10% to synthetic resources, and 5% to the industrial research speed. So it's a bit better for research, and you're going to get a refinery construction speed bonus. Yeah, I feel like this is clearly the better one. So yeah, we will go for that one. And so that's why I was saying it would make sense for us to wait till we had that. I didn't know we'd have it this soon. Uh, but yeah, we can then start working on getting some of these. Try and get the oil and rubber uh, problem solved and, and you know we're in the Middle East if we conquer this territory here we're gonna get a ton of oil and so I don't know that we're gonna need to rely on refineries for a uh, uh, you know significant a significant part of the game and Metzko's has their civil war going on now because yeah if we conquered all this or even if we allied with them and, and traded then oil would no longer be an issue 
but rubber is probably always going to be a problem for us. So it's not like the refineries are going to be useless. Uh, we got the concentrated industry. Excellent. So that means we have all the industrial focuses uh, over here. So I suppose we'll start working on the synthetic oil ones now, now that we have that research bonus there. Right, so we'll go and knock that out. Now, I want to say we could have gotten this for free. I think there's a way to get this, this one here for free in a decision or something like that. Uh, and it looks like all... Yeah, all three of them did agree to the non-aggression pact. So now we have non-aggression pacts with three Middle Eastern powers. And we're going to go ahead and start going after, because you can't go any further down here. You either have to have gotten this one here, that focus right there, uh, in, you know, down our route, or Mustafa Kamel cannot be the, the current leader. So yeah, we won't be able to go down that route just yet. Uh, let's go ahead and start working on these. We'll get those two knocked out, and then we'll do the election, guys. All right, so we don't want to do the ship designer. I, I just don't think it's worth it right now. Uh, Austria votes to unite with the Hungarians. They'll likely become Austria-Hungary soon. And there is the Hindenburg disaster as well. So yeah, we'll see them become Austria-Hungary, and then we'll have to see what happens here in the Balkans. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see like what will happen between them and, and Romania and Yugoslavia. And I'm really hoping that Bulgaria doesn't join, try and ally with the Germans. Uh, they might. I'm hoping that doesn't end up being the case. And weren't they all at war? All right, so yeah, the Carlists rise up. That's basically what happened here. And yes, that's what I was thinking, that they were going to be very, very weak. Yeah, they look pretty weak, guys. I don't think the Carlists are going to win this one. Mm -mm. It'll either be the Republicans or the Nationalists. I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I, I don't expect the Carlists are going to do it. So we probably won't have a Carlist Spain. Uh, so, yeah, we're done here. Uh, so what do we want to get next? We're not in 1938. Uh, we're going to get some bonuses for the support companies. I don't know that we want to work on that just yet. I suppose we can get the interwar artillery. Yeah, that makes sense to grab that real quick. Yeah, we'll do that next. 105 days to get that knocked out. Can't get a few different things here now, uh, but I don't really want to work on the military staff just yet. Now, you could argue to to get these now while we have Mustafa Kemal because it'd be cheaper. It'd be a lot cheaper. You know, thirty percent bonus. Yeah, you could argue to to start working on these to save political power, but you know what, guys? I don't know that political power is going to be an issue for us as Turkey. We haven't had any problems yet. Uh, political power has been incredibly abundant, more so than I've ever seen with any other country. And so it looks like the Regional Defense Council of Aragon's gone. Oh, well, that changes things because the Carlists have conquered all that territory. All right, well, in that case, they could come back. Yeah, they could actually turn this around. That went well for them. Okay, well, we'll have to see. Yeah, I could have been wrong there. I wasn't expecting uh, the anarchists to, to get destroyed like that. So we finished up the national focus and this construction here. Uh, let's go ahead and get the excavation too. And then, with our national focus, we're going to get those military factories. This will be super helpful. Let's see what we're working on. Uh, we're currently getting this last civilian factory here, and then I think we're going to build some, some military factories. Or at least uh, a couple, because we could really use them. Uh, so let's build one there, and we'll build one here in Ankara. Uh, so one thing I didn't address last episode is the agency, the intelligence agency. I intentionally didn't get this yet uh, because I don't want to spend the civilian factories. We needed to, to have them building, even for 30 days. But we will get it this episode. Yeah, I think we're going to get it this episode so that we'll uh, we'll have that that operative. Because I could find a use for that operative. Typically, the first operative is really not that helpful. But in our particular case, I think it would be. Now, let's go and get the republicanism. We're going to keep doing that for the unaligned support. But more than anything, uh, so that we can get the uh, the stability up. We also can improve working conditions. We will do that as well. I know it's going to hit the factory output, but I want to get this stability up higher so we can continue to enact these. So we'll improve worker conditions. And I think that's it. We also spent our, our political power here as well. All right, so once we get that stability up a little bit higher, we'll enact one of these. Though if we're sitting at a high enough percentage, it doesn't look like we are. Yeah, it's all 50%. If it was like 54, just to kind of... Toss it into the the positive a little bit, then then I'd say let's go for that. 
All right, so we can go and start working on the next one. We have a research bonus here. So yeah, let's get that one started. And I think the, the next thing we'll want to get with our Pluto power, especially once we start doing these uh, decisions down here again, it is to try and get that theorist. And it looks like Mustafa Kamel has taken ill. Yesterday, he was rushed to the hospital in a dire state after collapsing unconscious on his yacht while hosting some old friends. The episode is the latest in a series of very concerning signs that Ataturk's health is rapidly deteriorating and advisors have privately expressed their concerns that he's working too hard as his condition becomes progressively more unpredictable. Despite his insistence that everything is fine, the government has taken it upon itself to monitor his health and is, compelling a, is compiling a list of possible measures to take. If he will not step away from his duties to take care of his ailing constitution, then we may have to consider forcing him to retire so that he can spend his final months with his family. Alright, so this unlocks the fading father's decisions. Let's take a peek at those real quick. Let's see exactly what they do. We might need to wait a second though. For it to load up. Yeah. Alright, we'll come back to this in a minute. Amelia Earhart circumnavigates the globe, so she'll be fighting for the Americans later, potentially, if they let her. Uh, what we're looking at, yes, that's right, I wanted to see those decisions. Uh, we do have the pay off our debts happening right now. Uh, it'll be done in like, what I think it's like 42 days there. So we have two choices here. We can seek treatment for them, and that gives quite a few penalties. Yeah, and he's going to be a less efficient leader due to his ailing health. Or you can just retire him. Won't cost anything. Uh, well, it does. I guess it costs 10% uh, stability here. However, you will get the, that national spirit, which it looks like it gives you like half of the bonuses that he gives you as a leader. And then you're going to get that in addition to whoever replaces him as the leader. Which I think is that guy that we've had an event about before. The conservative guy. Yeah, we might just go ahead and retire him, guys. We have 90 days, so we could keep him for a bit longer. I suppose we can wait to retire him. Yeah, we'll wait to retire him, give him like a month or two, and then we'll we'll retire him. You know, keep that stability while we can. Uh, we did get the fuel storage, excellent. Uh, we could go ahead and go after the synthetic oil experiments next, and I suppose that is what we're, we're gonna do. Yeah, let's go and grab that. All right, so yeah, give it like a month or two. Let me see what this decision. Oh, that's the retire one. Give it like a month or two, and then we'll uh, we'll retire him and see who our next leader is going to be. What benefits they give us? Oh, looks like I was correct. That's unfortunate. Carlos, the Carlos were defeated. I thought maybe when when they got that that new territory, but yeah, as soon as I saw how much territory they started with, I knew right away that wasn't going to be enough. Uh, leadership purges in the Soviet Union are happening. So yeah, it's kind of a shame. Uh, I think the Republicans are going to win. So we're going to have a a communist Spain. So they'll likely either stay completely out of the conflict uh, or they'll, they'll join the Comintern. Can't really say exactly which one will happen. So we'll give this again, yeah, maybe like two more weeks. That's what I'm thinking here. Like two more weeks and then we'll start knocking those out. Uh, looks like we have a bunch of decisions available. So let's just take a peek at what those are. Those are the industrial projects. Uh, so we finished the one that gave us the military factory. All right, so that's good news. Uh, let's go and get something else then. I don't know that there's any more that gives us military factories. It looks like these are all civilian. And what's nice about this one is it also gives you four steel. So it's clearly the, uh, the superior option. So yeah, I think we're going to go with that one. Get a little bit of extra steel, which would be helpful because we're actually trading for steel right now. So yeah, we'll take that and and uh, it's not going to stop us from trading, but maybe with the uh, excavation techs, it would be enough to, to give us a civilian factory back. And you know what, speaking of civilian factories, I think we should have, yeah, we did have that civilian factory built. We now have 13 working on this military factory. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, which is going to be done uh, next month actually, well, it looks like it's not going to be done next month because I think we're going to go ahead and get the intelligence agency now that we got those civilian factories done. We're going to pick this icon here. As far as the name, I'm just going to leave the one there. Uh, but feel free to suggest a name if you think that there's a, a name that's more fitting for Turkey here. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with using that one, though. Because typically Paradox uses something from uses the name from, from the country historically, though sometimes they are wrong. On, uh, they don't use the correct one for that period. So we did get two more military factories. Excellent. 
Now the next one is superior, superiority of arms, which is gonna give us two research bonuses for support artillery. Uh, but remember, we're gonna go ahead and do the election now. Uh, but before we do the election, let's go ahead and retire our uh, current leader, Mustafa Gamal, because uh, that will give us that benefit, which I don't think you get that if he if you do the election. So yeah, we'll go ahead and retire him, and we'll be choosing his successor, which yeah is going to be that one character uh, that I think we saw in a previous event. And so he'll be the leader of the Not Aligned Party, and he gives a daily political power gain, improved relations opinion, trade deal opinion factor, and ideology drift defense. Okay, so not as useful as Ataturk was. Uh, but remember, we do still get his uh, uh, national spirit here, uh, giving about half of those those bonuses. All right, so we have the election going. Uh, should be happening here in about 35 days, because I believe that's one of those quicker focuses. And we have a military factory. Let's go and assign it to the infantry equipment. Uh, we, we definitely need to, to get that uh, those shortages dealt with. Let me see if we have any other decisions here. Uh, stability is in the dumps now. Good God. Oh, and we... We lost him as a political advisor. I forgot he was a political advisor. That's that's right. That was where we had seen it from. I completely forgot that. He was the, the prime minister. Uh, so we've lost him there, and thus we have another opening here that we can fill out. And our current prime minister is uh, Akiar. Probably mispronouncing that. Um, that would give resource gain efficiency, subversive activity costs, daily democracy support, and military factory construction speed. But he'll get replaced... Actually, shoot, if he, if he paid for him now, he'd probably get replaced after the election. So yeah, we're not going to do that, obviously. Uh, you can see that the fuel is going up. Our tanks are done training, so let's just go ahead and put them in a separate army. I'll just put them over here, just so they're not, not training any longer. I want to keep the rest of the troop training to get the army experience to continue to go up. Uh, let's see if we want to do anything. You can't really do anything just yet with the support companies, and that's what I want to do next, is get some support companies. We did just get some research bonuses for those as well. So I think that's going to be the next thing that we research. Unless it's 1938, in which case we'd have different things we'd want to get. Uh, but yeah, it is still 1937. So let's go ahead and use these massive research bonuses that we have. We're going to go get engineer companies first. 41 days to get that knocked out because of how significant the research bonus is. Uh, we're also going to go and get the republicanism. And we can't really take any decisions over here just because that, that stability is so so low. I'm hoping it gets better though once we uh, uh, have this election. So we've created the agency. I am not going to get any more of the upgrades right now. Uh, we could do the anti-partisan because that's what we're going to be using our operator for. Could do that. But again, I really want the civilian factories focusing on, on building military factories right now. So here in 29 days we'll get an operative and, and that's the main reason why we got uh, got that spy agency so that we can use the operative down here against the Kurds. So Pakistan has split from India, declared war on them. There will likely be a white peace there soon. Uh, we have the restoration of Austria-Hungary, so they have finally done that. And we have finished up the national focus to hold our first party election. We're going to wait to do that until after the election. Uh, the long-awaited election day has finally arrived. Men and women all across the nation ignored poor weather and personal illness so that they could trek out to their province's designated voting booths and fill in their ballots for their preferred party. Nobody could have anticipated such a tremendous turnout, especially when the transition to democracy seemed to come so quickly. The electoral race has not exactly been clean, but any pro-democracy advocate would feel pride seeing so many Turkish citizens going out to vote in Turkey's first free election. The race was tight, and it took a significant amount of time to count all the votes and determine the final result. The, ult the ultimate winners of Turkey's first election are... And so we have two choices here. The Republicans, so this is our, our current leader, and so he would become the leader for the Democratic Party, and the CHP shall be given a Democratic mandate to govern the nation. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure how he's going to be the leader of the Democratic Party, but the CHP gets... I mean, I guess these are called the Democrat Party. You know what? I think what they're doing here, I think the CHP is going to become... They're going to, Okay, they're going to change the ideology of the CHP. I think that's what happens. Yeah, so he would still be the leader of the CHP, and, and the CHP would be in power, but they would be the Blue Party. They'd be the Democratic Party. Okay, yeah, I think they're that's what they're doing. They're changing ideology here. Or we say the Democrat Party, the DP shall be given a Democratic mandate to govern the nation. 
And that's the one I believe we have to go with if we want to become the Ottoman Empire. So we will. Uh, so let's go ahead and knock that out. So we're going to have a new leader, and that's Menderes, the one we've seen in all those events. His uh, bonuses are Man of the Nation, Daily Political Power Gain, Increased Stability, and a Reduction of Political Advisor Cost. All right. So th those are some helpful benefits. Uh, stability is still quite garbage right now. We are still getting the, the bonuses from Mustafa Gamal, though. We'll get that until he dies. And so, and that's the reason why you want to get, you, you want to retire him so that you can get that benefit because uh, it'll last longer and you won't be getting all those penalties. So we have two choices here. Uh, we could go, oh, this has been, the name's been changed here. Yeah, they changed the name on that because that was called something else. I can't remember what it was called. Um, Ataturk's Dream or something like that. Achieve Ataturk's Dream. Uh, so they changed the name of it. And now it says the Kamalis will become hostile to the government. We're going to get political power, and there's going to be a change in popularity of democracy. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so different effects as well. The other choice would be to assess our future now that we have a new leader. And we're going to get the national spirit, the legacy of Ataturk, which grants a negative 5% stability. Okay, so the effects might have changed that because now it's not as useful. Hmm. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, guys. I know that these are great benefits, but there's a, a long path down here and, and, and coming over to this one. And so I think we're going to go ahead and knock out some of these. And, and the reason for that, obviously this one is garbage. Yeah, that's not a good one at all. Uh, but the reason why I want to go for this is because of this one right here. Now, I could use that political power. I almost want to go, that, go for that for, for the, the political power here. But yeah, I really want to do this before France is taken over by the Bonapartes. Because I think that they'd be less likely to accept, and I don't know if the game considers that or not, like who the leader is and, and uh, the, ideolo the ideology of the country. You would think that stuff would be considered by the game. But I, I really want them to give this, this province to us, and I just think that the Bonapartes would be less likely to do that than uh, the current leaders of France. So I almost want to race down to this. And we have to go down here anyways in order to continue down to the purge, the officers, uh, which would uh, start the, the Turkish Civil War. So yeah, I feel like going here early would be useful. And plus, these are these are 35 days. So you can get both of these done in the time that it takes to do one of these. So yeah, I think it, it makes sense to go ahead and grab those real quick, even if it does have that negative to the, uh, the stability. But yeah, I think it, it makes sense to get that. Uh, let's see if there's... No, there's nothing we can do here just yet. And again, stability is just too low uh, to be doing those decisions. We're going to have to get that, that stability up first before we're able to, to continue our efforts down here with the Kurds. Uh, we also need to get that focus so that we can get the uh, make use of our... Although, never mind. The compliance is not as low as it used to be. It's now actually gotten worse. All right, well, we got a new operative that we can make use of here, and... I mean, we have an obvious choice right down here at the bottom. You know, we have some some decent characters here. You got a, a tough seducer. Uh, but look at this character here, Nazar. He's both tough and he's a commando, uh, which we don't even have the uh, the upgrade that makes the commandos more likely. Uh, so I, I don't even know if you can get commandos typically without that. Maybe this is a character that, that Turkey starts out with. Because, yeah, I want to say, let me just double check on this. Uh, the commando training. Chance of recruiting an operative with the commando trait plus 100%. Maybe you can do it without it, and it's just really unlikely. I think this might be a character Turkey starts with. It could even be a historical character. I've never heard of him. Uh, but yeah, he could even be a historical character. Uh, because not only does he have these great traits, but he also has three nationalities. So he has the Soviet nationality, Turkish nationality, and Kazakh nationality. So we won't be making use of that one. Uh, but against the, the Soviets, yeah, this would be incredibly helpful. Uh, yeah, he'd have a benefit if we use him against the Soviets. So we have to keep that in mind that we have him if he doesn't die. Uh, but for right now, we already know what we're going to have him do. We're going to have him root out resistance and whatever one of these provinces, you know, actually you can just click on that and I'll show you. Which one, whichever, whichever one of the provinces, which would be this one, has the highest resistance, we'll throw him over there to, to help reduce that. And... We also have a decision available, Jihad. Oh, okay, they changed these uh, because of our the new party in power. So we still have we still have liberalism and populism. So we don't want to do this one, although 
You could use the extra political power and, and maybe even use the, the manpower in this case. Well, you know, I guess the political power doesn't pay for itself. But yeah, you could always use more manpower. Uh, over here with the, the Jihad, this just gives the, the war support. So I guess that's one way to get some war support. We're not going to do that right now. We still have the, the liberalism one available. Allows you to construct faster. And uh, it does take some, more of your civilian factories, though. So I don't know. I, I would assume that is beneficial, at least slightly, but not as much as it would be if it didn't have that penalty. And then the other one is fidelity, which will allow you to also increase your manpower. 2,500 weekly manpower. That's not bad at all. Yeah, that's a lot more than 250. Again, I don't think we're going to go for it just yet. But yeah, something to, to consider in the future. And we also have a free military factory, so let's want to get that signed. I think we're going to do the artillery. I think that's what makes sense for us. And we got excavation too. Alright, so we're done over here for now. We're not going to get the fuel refining because, uh, you know, we just don't have any oil to make that you know, worthwhile. Uh, so we already have the, the land auctions going. We have one support company going here. I suppose motorized would be the next thing that we need. Uh, so let's go and knock that out. It's going to be 53 days to get that with the research bonuses that we have. Uh, also, it seems that we have the resource, probably because we just got the excavation. So we have the resource decisions. So let's just take a look and see which ones we have available. So these ones are for chromium. We don't need chromium, guys. That's one of the things that Turkey has plenty of. Uh, so yeah, we don't want these ones to, we don't want to be notified of any of these ones. The the steel and the oil, we could use those ones, uh, but I think they require higher excavation. Uh, so this one requires construction. The rest seem to, to require, oh, that one's also construction. Uh, but yeah, the rest require excavation. We're not high enough level just yet. But those are ones we would be interested in getting. And so it looks like the Republicans have won in Spain, and thus, I mean, as of right now, I was going to say they're, they're communists, but they're only 48% communists. And that's a, it's technically a democratic government here. All right, well, we'll have to see what happens there in Spain. We'll follow them. Uh, we did get the engineer companies. Fantastic. I don't think we're going to go for either one of these. We don't yet have the design company for the planes, which the one we get would affect fighters, so I don't want to get that yet. And so you know what I think we're going to do, guys? Let me just double check, make sure there's nothing else that I, I really want. But if there isn't, well, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. No point not getting radar because we would be able to build it right now. So I think what we're going to do, and this is kind of a strange uh, choice because I don't typically do this. I think we're going to go for an air doctrine. I usually wait uh, to get air doctrine just until a bit later. But you know what? We're, we're just going to knock one out. We, we might not do any additional ones. But yeah, just knock this one out, get higher fighter detection. Uh, more air wing mission experience gain. And and we are going to go for this one. I think it makes the most sense for how our air force will be designed. Yeah, we'll have like a small air force. Maybe we'll be a little bit uh, further along the air doctrines than you'd typically be at this point. In which case, you know, we'd have a, a more elite force. A smaller elite air force. And unfortunately, the father of, of the Turks has died. The Republic grieves. War hero, revolutionary, president, and father of the Turks, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, has passed away peacefully in his sleep. He maintained his duty to the Turkish people and the Republic he founded up until the very end. Thousands of mourners have paid their respects in Istanbul before his body was transferred by Cassian, ship, and train to Ankara. There his state funeral was held with the entire parliament and dignitaries from all over the world in attendance. With the father of the modern Turkish nation now gone, the Republic must move on. Menderes was one of the many speakers at Ataturk's funeral, and his speech is pledged to continue the legacy of the man who had been so vital in securing the nation's freedom. And so we lost the, the benefit that we were getting from him, unfortunately. And uh, we lost the father of the nation, that's what's important to note here. The father of the Turks. We finished the assess our future, uh, further reducing stability, uh, but that'll allow us to get I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Hate? Hate? Uh, but that all is in reference to this province right here. It's not an important province. I just want it. It's a way to peacefully expand our territory. You don't get very many options to do that in Hoi 4. So, yeah, I want to I want to get it, guys. It's rightfully ours. We deserve it. And again, I, I feel like uh, the, the French would be more likely to do it with their current democratic leaders than they would be 
and it does seem that the event is broken. Yeah, the triggers are broken. Uh, you know what controls for whether or not the event uh, needs to fire. Either the triggers are broken, and it's, it's not considering something, or the event didn't assign something you know, to, to tell you to, to stop firing the event, to tell the game to stop firing it. Uh, one of those two broke, and that likely means we might see that event over and over again, which would be unfortunate. And I don't know how it didn't get fixed yet, if that's the case. Because that seems like uh, something that somebody should have reported by this point. We do have the, the new decisions available for the economic, the economic policy to discuss investments with all these different countries. Now, the different options that are going to be available are based off of the opinion you have with that country. And so what you want to do is get the opinion increased before you send that off to them. And so... Germany is a natural choice, but their opinion of us is much lower than, say, the United States, because we're both democracies right now. France doesn't really like us. Yeah, I think we should probably, rather than do the Germans first, which I, I think we could go up and do multiple ones, let's do the United States first, because, you know, it'll be easier later on to get Germany uh, a higher opinion with them. So let's work on the United States first. We want to improve relations with them. And then we'll wait until it gets higher before we send off that, uh, you know, send off the request. Now, I'm not entirely sure what, the, what what all they can choose there, what all we can choose. So I'm very interested to see what happens there. Uh, we do get plus 5% war support from that, and we just have to wait for the French to respond. Uh, we're not going to do the, the peace in the world one right now. Yeah, we're not going to want to do that just yet. Although it would help increase our stability. But we're going to wait to do that. Let's get these ones. These ones are uh, pretty good overall. Of course, this one's going to result in the, the Chemilis becoming hostile to the government. We do get a, a huge chunk of a little power. And then these ones here are also really good. So let's go and get that one knocked out. It's going to be a full 70-day focus. And France agreed to cede the sovereignty of Hete to us. Or Hate. And we also got a, a lump of little power from it as well. All right, excellent. Uh, so we might go ahead and save up for the theorist. I think that's what we're going to do. Let's save up for the theorist and get get him. And we might want to go ahead and add engineers to our, our infantry. As far as... Uh, we don't have enough. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, as far as what else we can do. Yeah, we don't have enough to do anything else. We could do something else with one of the other uh, divisions here. That would be a possibility. I'd really like to get the mountain troops up to, to 20 combat with. Because uh, we'll probably make heavy use of them. Now we got the motorized as well. Excellent. Well, you might want to take a look at those tanks. I bet they're not well designed either. Probably need to make some adjustments to them. But we're going to do the infantry first because that's what we mostly have. So it makes sense to do them first. Uh, so we'll need to get the, the motorized building. And we also need to get another... Another tech selected. I think we're close enough to 1938 to work on 1938 techs now. Uh, you know what? Actually, I said we're getting the theorist. We're not getting the theorist. I lied. We're going to get the light aircraft designer, guys. And then we're going to go ahead and research, finally, those fighters while I'm thinking about it. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and get this, get that bonus for them. Uh, it's going to be increased agility and max speed. Uh, I looked at all the other choices, and that's that's a clear one in my opinion. There were, were some other ones that are okay. You know, you get the the, uh, the ground attack for your, your close air support. Uh, this would increase the range of not just the heavy fighters, but also the, the regular fighters, so that would be helpful too. This one here is probably the least useful. Got the grand battle plan. Let's go and get the prepared defense next, increasing defense and organization for all of our infantry and motorized and mechanized troops. And yeah, just the stability's horrible positions. They just haven't been able to do anything over there. Which is a shame, because that was one way we were earning a lot of political power. I mean, I guess you could take the risk with the 50%. That's not terrible. Uh, we do have a, a military factory done. We need to take a look and see what we're currently constructing. Uh, but we need to use this military factory for the motorized. Let me see if there's anything else that I might have missed. Nah, just the anti-air. Got the light tanks building. We have close air support building already, so... Uh, with those fighters, we want to get those built as soon as we have them researched. And, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do that decision real quick, guys. I'm, I'm going to try it out. 
Oh well, yeah, we, we can also do these if it's high enough. Let me just take a look at the United States opinion. We just started not that long ago. It is doing okay. Uh, we'll give it a little bit more time before we do it. And this would also end up netting us a little bit of uh, political power. So let's just see which one we want to do. We're sitting at 50% in three of the places. Uh, we do want to take a look and see what the current resistance is, because that would kind of influence which one we want to go for, as well as their current uh, compliance. I think we should focus on these two up here in the north first. Yeah, we'll, we'll focus on those ones first. Let's go and do this one, and hopefully the 50-50 chance goes in our favor, and it did. All right, excellent. Increasing the compliance even further and reducing the overall resistance. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to this location next. That's going to be the one I fell in. Uh, and I did say I wanted to look at what the civilian factories are doing. Now we're forced to because they have just finished up. So I feel like we should get more military factories. Maybe just two more for right now. Maybe we'll go back to, to getting uh, civilian factories. Because we still don't even have enough for a full line right now. Now given when we change our economic policy, that would be different. Ah, damn. Alright, so we, we lost here. Lost some stability. Uh, but did get that political power. So at least there's that. And are we at a good enough position with the United States to, to send that off? Let's take a look. It's higher, but I kind of want to get it as high as possible before we send it. I saw that there were some other decisions available here. Give refuge to the German scientists. I don't think we're going to do that one, guys. Because if we were to ally with them, which is a potential possibility in the future, if we were to ally with them... Uh, then, you know, we don't want to be given refuge to their scientists, and plus it's going to hit our stability. Uh, while I think it's perfectly worth it for the research speed bonus, I don't think in this particular case we're going to we're gonna do that. Uh, we're not going to ban fascism either. I don't think we have much fascism support in the first place. Now, I did notice that there was something new here. Fundamental state management. Okay. I see. So do you have options for dealing with that now? Empower fundamentalists in the state. I see. So we can't do that because you have to have the traditionalists placated. It's 200 political power. Good God. All right. That's the only one I'm seeing. Well, we have this one here. This would be 100 political power. Increase influence of fundamentalists. And that's because this is the one unaligned state here that doesn't have support for anybody. All right. We'll, we'll use the political power for that. Feels like something we should do because we will be looking at a potential civil war here. And we can empower fundamentalists in this state as well once we have the, the political power, it seems. And we can also increase it here. But yeah, that's uh, redded out, so can't do it just yet. But I believe this would make the civil war easier. Uh, so it's, it's probably a good idea to, to do them. And I said that we weren't going to have any warfare early on here, but I guess we will have the warfare because we're going to have that that civil war. Uh, we can now build synthetic refineries. Excellent. Let's go with the... I think we're going to go with the rubber first. We're going to need those for our planes. I'm sure we're already short rubber. Yeah, we're negative two right now. Uh, steel is getting a better position. Still have to trade for it, but it's not as bad as it, it once was. And Wilhelm II returns to the German Empire. All right, so they're back under their Kaiser. And it looks like Austria-Hungary has annexed Czechoslovakia as well. And this is now an integrated, Slovenia is now an integrated puppet here of uh, Yugoslavia. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the Greek Civil War is still ongoing. And let me see if there's anything here we need to, to be aware of. No. Uh, but yeah, the Greek Civil War is still ongoing. Kind of hard to tell who's going to win here. It does look like the king might be losing, yeah, because he lost all his territory down here in the south. So he might see a republic there rather than a king. Well, that'd be unfortunate. That'd be two situations where the king lost, uh, where the monarchists lost, Spain and, and Greece. Uh, but it does look like it. that's that's what's going to happen there in Greece. We did knock out that focus, got all that political power, and uh, the Kemalists are now hostile to the government. Uh, the next one we're going to want to get, uh, well, I would love to get the military factories, and, and the military factory construction speed, that'll also be super helpful. I feel like we should do this one to go ahead and start uh, trying to integrate the Kurdish state. Now, we don't have high enough compliance here yet. 
Yeah, it's nowhere near high enough, I don't think. Again, I'm not entirely sure what it needs to be at. It's like 60 or 70% or something, I believe is what I read. Uh, we do need to get this Theorist. Uh, so we're going to do the Grand Battle Plan Expert. Give that 15% bonus there. Spend some of that political power. Oh, yes, the United States. They should like us now. Oh, yeah, they definitely like us quite a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and, and send off that request. Probably could have sent that off a few months ago, actually. Uh, so we want to discuss investment possibilities with the United States. So it disappears after doing it. I, I believe you should be able to do another one. Maybe it's just you can only do one at a time. That's what I would suspect. Uh, how long until we get those fighters? 54 days. It's going to be some time. All right, so let's go ahead and put this into... I feel like infantry equipment is definitely still the issue. And it's, it's steel, which we have. So we could go ahead and get this without... And causing further resource issues. So let's get more infantry equipment. Try and fix our, our shortage issue there. Alright, so it also doesn't help that we're training the troops, but I feel like we have to because of the, the army experience. Oh, look at this. We're going to have a Camellus infiltration crisis in 26 days. Right here. Alright, so we could take this one, but yeah, we need the 100 political votes to do it. Uh, so that's another unaligned state, so that would go over to the Kamalist. All right, so that's unfortunate. Because uh, I don't think we'll be able to stop it. We won't have the political power in time. And we don't have the stability to, to do anything over here. Stability is just in a horrible position, guys. Sitting at 13% right now. Yeah, that's not great. And we don't have any decisions for increasing it either. Uh, before we had some, some decisions. Now, we have tw 25 political power. That means we can thwart the infiltration so I think we will do that. Let me just find it. It's not over here. There's some power. Right here. Yeah, I think we will go ahead and thwart it. Try and stop them. So that maybe we can do it there. I, mean, I can see why they give you so much political power. You need a lot of it as Turkey. Uh, it makes sense why they give you so much of it. Because uh, there's so much to do with the, the political power. You know, early on you're able to fill these out because there's not a whole lot to do. But here at this point, we, we are definitely needing it. Uh, formation flying has been knocked out, and I think that's the only one we're going to get in here. As I said, we're just going to do the one, because we are in 1938 now. Uh, so let's go and start getting the 1938 text, starting with the computing machine to get that research speed bonus. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to play much longer, guys. Yeah, we're probably going to have to end the episode here very soon. I did want to see what the United States was going to do here, and they did choose to invest in our military industry. Uh, so it doesn't affect our choices. I think it affects their choices uh, with how, how much they like you. And that means that we have a 50% chance of adding one military factory, a 35% chance of getting two, and a 15% chance of getting three. I don't think it'll tell us which one we got either. Okay, did we already have it assigned? Because I, uh, I didn't see anything about it. We had 10 before. Did we not get the bonus yet? We might not have gotten the bonus yet. I'm pretty sure we had 10 military factories. Uh, we got the rubber processing. Excellent. Knocking these out pretty quick here. Uh, let's go ahead and go with the 94 day one for the, the fuel gain. And try and get our, our fuel reserves up a little bit higher. Although, there are the 1938 techs. And of course, we could go ahead and get the field hospitals and add those to our units. That would be super helpful. And it's a research bonus too. You know, let's go and finish these up, guys. Yeah, let's finish them up. We'll get this last one here, oil processing. Okay, so things are going pretty well, but I think they're all about to erupt here. Uh, you know, with that low stability and and uh, civil war, you know, upcoming. We did finish up the research for the fighters. Uh, could get the naval bombers eventually. We'll probably want those, but yeah, it's not gonna be a priority for right now. There, you know, we have a uh, factory shortages, so don't really need to be using them for that right now. So let's go ahead and get the, uh, the support companies here. We're going to get the field hospitals. 41 days because of that massive research bonus. Very helpful. Did we not stop it? Did we not thwart it? It seems like it's still ongoing. And all kinds of stuff just happened. Two civil wars just erupted. One in Japan, one in Portugal. And we got our national focus finished up. Uh, I'm curious to see what that unlocked there. Uh, we can go straight to privatize our infrastructure. However, I think we do want to get these military factories first. It makes more sense to, to get those. Uh, so let's go to knock that out. 
Uh, but let's see what's happening over here. So we have the two different factions here in uh, Portugal. You have the, the fascist, and then you have the kingdom of Portugal. Let's hope that the kingdom wins. And then Japan was the other one, which I wasn't expecting a civil war over here. But yeah, it looks like they are having a communist civil war. Well, that's interesting. Remember, we left them on default, so they had the choice of which route they wanted to go. Typically, that results in them going fascist, but not this case. Uh, they have gone communist, uh, so they're having a communist civil war. What is that to see who wins that? I'm surprised, though. I wasn't expecting them to do that. And we did not have a white piece over here yet. Pakistan looks like they're actually defeating India. So we're going to let this play like a few hours so that we can take a look at the new decisions that are available from that focus. Though I'm not seeing anything just yet. Huh. Okay, so here it is right here. The uh, integrate. Alright, so it's on the map. That's the reason why we didn't see that. That we do have to keep that open to, to keep looking at it. So we can see exactly what we need here. We need resistance to be less than 30% and compliance to be more than 70%. Okay, so it was 70 and not 60. I wasn't entirely sure which one it was. And it costs 200 political power. Wow. All right, but remember we can get a lot of political power from doing these if you're successful. We are at a 54% chance here. So I think we're gonna start working on just like one state at a time to get the compliance as high as possible. And it makes sense to start with the one with the highest compliance, which would be this one. And so yeah, we'd wanna do it here uh, of course, we're not going to do that just yet, uh, but yeah, we're going to want to keep countering the rebels here until we're able to uh, court, uh, make it into a core, and, and we won't have to deal with the, the resistance problems anymore uh, in that area. So we'll just move from one state to the next, and, and again, just focus on one state at a time, unless they have a really low percentage. And I'm seeing this here. Is that that one decision we just took? Is it not? Is it not done yet? No, no, traditional are, are placated there. And you see the the schemers are quite unhappy here. Yeah, so these are all the areas they already have control over. Traditionalists have been placated there. Yeah, I think the, the Camelists are, are through here, and then the Traditionalists are through here. And this area, uh, it seems to also be in their control. We do have the north here. And then, of course, we have the, the Kurds over here, but you're seeing that they have the Separatist fatigue. So we've worn them out in some of these areas. Meaning that the resistance to K-Speed is faster and the compliance growth speed is quicker. Uh, you do have less available resources though. And it seems we have that all throughout here. But yeah, not in here. That's what I thought. This is the Kurdish Rebellion modifier. Okay, so that'll actually help get this compliance up a bit quicker. So we can try and core that, that territory in and finish up the, the Kurdish resistance to our rule. Bring them back into, into the country and to support in the government. Unfortunately, we do have to end the episode here, guys. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the, the complexity of it all, uh, even if it is a bit confusing how some of it works. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying it overall. I'm liking what they did with Turkey. Uh, very interesting. I hope you guys are enjoying the campaign as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.